we had our own ice sheet here in Western Canada uh, called the Cordilleran ice sheet, and it itself was a big ice sheet, although it was dwarfed by the Laurentide ice sheet to the east. But the Cordilleran ice sheet um, extended from the Pacific Ocean on the west to the Rocky Mountains on the east, and for a brief period of time, it actually coalesced with the Laurentide ice sheet, so the two ice sheets were in contact with one another and it extended up into central Yukon and again down into the continental U.S., down into Montana, Idaho, um, and Washington. It's kind of interesting that that ice sheet, in fact, did not cover all of Yukon. You think of Yukon as being a very cold, cold climate, and people kind of wonder, well, why, if it covered southern British Columbia, if it covered Victoria, why didn't it cover... Uh, you know, Dawson City, for example. And the reason is it's just too dry up there. You don't get enough moisture to nourish the ice sheet. It's uh, parts of that northern Yukon are really an Arctic desert. You just get very little moisture. It's cold enough for an ice sheet, but you just don't get enough precipitation to nourish it. And you need both cold and you need uh, moisture to create an ice sheet. It's kind of a peculiar set of conditions that you require. And this whole Cordilleran ice sheet is, is important. It comes into play in terms of debates about the popula uh, you know, populating the New World. And uh, it's quite clear that when the ice sheet was at its maximum extent, you could not have had people moving down from Eurasia and from uh, Alaska down into to the Midwest U.S. or South America. Um, so there were windows uh, or periods of time when that um, opportunity wasn't available to people, but then there were also times when they could freely move down, when the ice sheet either didn't exist or when it was um, less extensive than it was at its maximum. 